Hello friends, welcome back to another video and welcome to 2023. This is my first video back and we're just gonna start off with some basic New Year's content. I got some gift cards for Christmas and my birthday and everything like that for Barnes and Noble so I thought I would just kind of do a little early year book shopping. So we're gonna go over the books that I bought as well as my rough January TBR because it is already a full week into January but we can still talk about it, there's still time. I think I'm gonna start with what I already am reading or what I already am planning on reading and then we'll get into the stuff that I bought because I'm sure I'll end up reading some of it this month. I'm just not sure which one because I'm very excited about all of these. So first off, the first book that I read this year, actually, I started rereading Harry Potter and I'm currently on the third book. I got all my copies from thrift books, I don't even know how many years ago, and I've been meaning to reread them for the past couple of months, so we finally got to it. And when I tell you, they are so quick to get through. I got through the first two books within two days and I'm already this far into the third. So I'm hoping by the end of the month I can get through this one and then maybe also Goblet of Fire, which is obviously a lot larger than the other ones. <laughs> But it has been so fun revisiting these characters and revisiting this world because it's really nice to get to kind of live through these characters for a little bit. Picture of Dorian Gray. I said I read this last year, I didn't quite finish it, so I'm just kind of wrapping it up this year. I think a big goal for this year is to get through my physical TBR just because I have a stack of books that have just kind of been sitting there and I miss the time when I was younger where you would buy a book as you wanted to read it. Like instead of stockpiling, you just get a book when it's time to read that book and then once you finish it, you can get another one. So I think a big goal of mine this year is to just get through what I already own so that I can kind of justify buying more books because I know that I actually will read them. So The Hanged Man by TJ McGregor. This is something that Kaylin keeps asking me to read and I just haven't gotten around to it, but it's been sitting in my little TBR shelf so I would really like to get to it, maybe just so I can get it out of there, but if I'm being honest, I don't have very high expectations and I think that's why I haven't gotten to it yet. And then Pachinko, which I put off all of last year because I was too scared to say the title wrong. Jack Edwards has been talking about how- Jack Edwards has been talking about how he meant to read- Jack Edwards has been talking- Jack Edwards had been talking about how he meant to read- Jack Edwards had been talking about how he wanted to read this book by the end of the year and then he updated his Goodreads to say that he'd started reading it and everybody was super excited because it's something he'd been talking about and then I felt like I was missing out so I would like to read this although I will say when he was talking about it he said that it kind of got disappointing towards the end so we'll see. I'll give it a try. Now that I can say the title, I can actually get through talking about it and reading it and all that. And that's kind of the rough stack that I have that I want to read this year, which if you don't know, the place that I work is currently undergoing renovations. Actually starting tomorrow, I'm off work until whenever. I have like a whole week and a half where I'm not working at all, so I'm hoping to read a lot of things. And then my little book haul from Pango Books is kind of like thrift books. It's another like reseller place so you can sell your books and all of that. But I bought a copy of No Longer Human. It's in pretty good quality except there's a couple places where the person highlighted it, but that's okay. We don't go to these websites expecting perfect condition. I think if you need books but you don't want to spend too much money, that's definitely a great place to go. But I got this because I've recently read the manga version by Jinji Ito, but I wanted to see the actual book, so I guess I'll see how it compares to that interpretation. And then if I'm not mistaken, Wendigoon made a video about this story. I don't actually remember if that's true or not, but if it is, I'm gonna watch that after and we're just gonna get the full experience. And then we have my little Barnes and Noble haul. I got the third volume of Cheese Sweet Home, which I didn't realize there was a fourth one. I thought this was it, so now I'm gonna have to go back out and get the next one. I've talked about these books a couple times on this channel, but it's literally just a tiny kitten, no plot, just vibes, just living life. And the past two books that I've read, I think I really tried to force myself to get through them just so that I could say I had read another book, so I'm really hoping for this one I can pick it up, read like a chapter at a time, and then set it down and kind of use it as a palette cleanser between dark books because that was something that I really struggled with last year was I have all these dark existential books and they're just really hard to pick up because there's a lot of thought and there's a lot of bad feelings that, that go along with the books that I have so I think having something in between that could sort of lighten the mood would be good. These next three are recommendations from Kaylin just because I was looking for more scary books and he was very invested. We have Tiny Nightmares which is a collection of short stories I think. I don't really know how I feel about short horror stories just because I read the first Books of Blood and I got kind of bored because they got a little bit repetitive. You're getting introduced to these characters, you know something bad's about to happen and then it does and then it moves on to the next one and I really like stories where you have to kind of build up that tension. So we'll see what I think about this. Speaking of Books of Blood, we have Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker which is what inspired Hellraiser and this is the same author as Books of Blood that I was just saying so we'll see if I'm any more interested in this. I have seen the movie so that will probably help. I feel like with horror it's really easy to do in movies because people can fall back on jump scares and that kind of gets the audience every time or you can fall to more psychological stuff and whatever as long as it's unsettling people are like yeah that was a good movie or they say that they don't get it and it's too weird whatever it's really easy to make people scared when you can have loud noises and stuff on the screen and all this stuff but when you're writing a 
a horror book, you have to be able to keep the audience engaged and you have to write something that would be scary to a majority of people. You have to really target the things that people don't like. And then obviously without making it cliche or anything, there's like a very fine line that you have to do. I also don't know what I'm talking about. This is just my personal opinion, as with everything on this channel. Don't take anything I'm saying seriously. Oh, I also didn't talk about it. I'm currently reading Verity by Colleen Hoover. I'm like halfway through right now and I stand by what I always say, that I'm not the biggest Colleen Hoover fan, so. Back to horror, we have Don't Look Now. It's the same author who wrote Rebecca, which I've seen some people talking about on here. But this is a collection of short stories by the same author. Again, horror short stories. We'll see what I think about them. But that cover is quite unsettling. I don't know. I don't really have any expectations for those books just because I don't have much experience reading that genre or reading that format. So I guess we'll see how these different authors do it. And then we have the last two, which I am very excited about. I have The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which I'm gonna take that sticker off. If that was printed on the cover, I was not going to buy this book, but I saw that it was just a regular sticker, so she lives on. I have already read The Secret History. I read it last year because my brother had it on Kindle and said that it was his favorite book, so then I got it on Kindle so that I could read it. But then he wanted to get into entertaining, so he bought a physical copy, and then I saw that he had a physical copy and I wanted one. So now we both have it on Kindle as well as physical copies. I just really want to reread this and take better note of the characters and the interactions because I've gotten more into annotating in the past couple of months so it'd be cool to kind of see if there's any notable conversations or anything like that in this book. And also it's just a really nice book to have. This is just a really cool looking book. And then finally we have one that I'm very very excited for and that is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. I have been thinking about this book for the past couple of weeks, like I cannot stop thinking about it because I've heard people talk about it for a while but more recently, I've just been thinking about how this seems like something I would enjoy. As far as I know, you're following a woman and she's just kind of going through life and she gets a job at a convenience store and she decides she just likes being there and she's getting all this pressure from people around her saying, oh, you need to have a real job, you need to get on with your life, you're an adult now, all this stuff. And she's just content to work at her little convenience store job and that's it. And you know what? Me too. <laughs> because I have been getting a lot of pressure on all sides to go to college, to learn how to drive, to move out, to do all these things. And maybe I just want to be a barista and that's it. Obviously that's not a forever thing, but that's a for right now thing that I'm completely happy with. So I feel like it'll be really comforting to read about a character who feels the same way. So that concludes my little book haul. I'm still kind of getting back into videos, so you're gonna have to be patient with me. Same thing for my main channel, Riverbend. I really, really want to post music stuff, but I just don't, I don't know where to start. I want to do so good and it's so intimidating because I feel like nothing that I put out on that channel is gonna be up to the standard that I want it to be. So I'm just trying to put stuff out as I see fit. But that's all I have for you today. I hope you all had a good new year and that you're all starting it off right and that you're not pushing yourselves too hard because the new year comes with a lot of pressure. So with all that being said, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, you can subscribe to this channel. You can also subscribe to my main channel, Riverbend, where I post music content. Also my Instagram or my Spotify, it's the same name and in the description of these videos. I will also put my Goodreads and my story graph in there for you. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.